last but not least, uh, we go to the fourth question, and that is going to be open to all. And uh, the big one is, what commonalities exist in health professions criteria and principles for core competencies, and how can these be leveraged to drive quality in health professions education? So I'll open it up to the group. I'll also entertain uh, any members of the panel to comment. Okay. Any comments from the panelists? Just kick it off. I'll just start. I think yesterday um, in one of our group, um, in the afternoon we had the individual group sessions, we did kind of get into this topic a little bit. We were talking about opportunities. And um, I know, Patricia, you were part of it. Pete was part of it. And there were many others here. And we began to, I just kind of evolved from the conversation. We talked about ethics and moral agency. We talked about uh, cultural um, sensitivity, and I know there were others, uh, so I would just like to bring that maybe back into the discussion as a starting point. Had leadership and communication, and um, that I've forgotten the, the entrusted piece, uh, the trust and entrusted piece. I think the other one was patient safety too, or something. I don't know. Is yes. is Joe in here? Joe was the one that did that uh, systematic review, <laughs> but looking at the IPE competencies or round well IPE and then safety. Yeah, I mean, there's clearly things that are very discipline specific, but then there's other things, and and this even goes down to coursework. So where we're seeing some of this is when you say we're going to study the U.S. health system. Well, that that's a study that can go across the health professions. Or um, you're going you're gonna to talk about um, informatics or health informatics right now and big data and how do you look at it and what, you know, how do you use it or not abuse it and, and all that. So some of that can be you know, looked at um, in a way that is um, opportunity for you know, more interprofessional learning together uh, as part of that. I want, I want to take a step back, though. I want, to, I want to make sure you get the point that continuing education is still an area that requires um, a lot of attention in this space. And um, to foster this, I don't know that we're talking about core competencies, but, but joint commitment to doing things in a way that is going to bring the right people to the party at the right time. So um, one thing we've done is uh, with medicine and nursing, we've been meeting for 10 years, started out just to learn from each other about how we all did things. And then after the IOM report, we said, wait a minute, what can we do in the continuing education space to try and make this better? And we thought, we tried something that didn't work. Then we came back and then we said, wait a minute, what if we incentivize people who were doing interprofessional continuing education? And how could we do that? Well, maybe we could harmonize our accreditation expectations of continuing education providers such that instead of doing three accreditations, a provider could do one accreditation. As long as they were doing 25% of their activities uh, in an interprofessional space, we, we coined planned by the team for the team. And that concept has grown and now we have 25 organizations, many of them health systems, who are using this as part of their safety and uh, medication management and all these other things, and incentivizing people to come and do these projects and say, by the way, you'll also get continuing education as part of the package. So there's an incentive for them. Uh, there's an incentive for the provider. And, and now we have, uh, in fact, Wednesday, we had a workshop where we had another 25 groups coming in to learn about this and where we're going and how we're getting there. And um, we're excited about the, the outcomes that are coming out of, here's what we've done, here's where we were before, here we got this team together, they all planned this thing, and now we're measuring our outcomes, we're doing our uh, benchmarks, and we're seeing the changes that are improving the quality of the care. Um, I also say that I'm out of time. Um, another example I'll give you is 
we have uh, a big problem in this country with uh, opioids and death. And some of that was focused initially on long-acting and sustained release opioids and a REMS coming out of the government saying that the companies have to work to make this better. Uh, initially, it was company to doctor, and that got nowhere. The doctors didn't want to hear from the companies. They, you know, they weren't interested. The CE community stepped up, and we met with the FDA and said, we think we can make a difference here, given the opportunity. So now, um, and it's now gone from the Conjoint Committee of Continuing Medical Education to the Conjoint Committee of, of Health Profession education, Continuing Education. So now we have a, a number of professional uh, accreditors of the CE area coming together and, um, and basically working with the FDA and the drug companies, getting down to the physician and pharmacist and nursing level um, to basically make sure that they're meeting their REMS requirement of educating people. Um, and there has been a drop in, you know, the prescribing of some of these things in an improper way. Uh, there's been a drop in opioid-related deaths in this window. Unfortunately, there's been a rise in heroin-related deaths in the same window. So it's a public health issue of, of the highest order, and education can be part of it, and it's the continuing education that I want to say has not gotten enough attention in this package because um, that's where real change can happen quickly. Our profession did the PharmD, and we'll, when we populate enough people out there, we'll change things. That's happened, and it's taken like 45 years. You know? So uh, I, I think we have to be more focused on how can we change outcomes by working with the practitioners in the field in addition to the degree programs. Very good points. Okay, Pat, and then, or Rick? Yeah, yeah, just Pat, Rick, yeah. Well, I just wanted to respond to what, what Pete was talking about. And part of it was that going back to addressing just the problem, that it was about what not to do, and then we ended up with another problem. You know, in the DOD, we're now looking at integrative health, and I think this is an example of where we look at the usual suspects, pharmacy, medicine, <laughs> nursing, instead of really looking at the larger health professional group. And so I would like for us to think about the core of it, but then the harmonization at the same time. So we, yes, we could do core, but then the next step above that is what would we do with the harmonization and who else would be involved in what level? And I think we tend to look at core over here and harmonization over here, and it, they're related. And so if we could say, where do we start with core, but then what is the harmony that goes attached to that core that still makes us connected as IPE, but um, not seeing it as a different bucket? Just a thought. Yeah, and, and so we don't forget to look at people who have already studied this a little bit. Uh, and in order to add another acronym to those that were the alphabet soup of healthcare, uh, CHIA in 2012 established the um, CIQG, which is CHIA's international quality group, uh, which does indeed identify uh, five different competency areas. Uh, that would be common to all, they hope, all international accrediting bodies. And I, I jotted those down, and, and I think they would apply most, they're broad enough so that, 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 that they would apply. It's honesty integri and integrity, accountability, fairness and validity, clarity and consistency, and the one that I liked the most was the recognition of the role of creativity and innovation in meeting the established accreditation standards. And so uh, while one might argue with some of CHIA's activities in the past, that, that seems like a pretty good move forward uh, in terms of identifying, and, and it is international, which is our scope also. So. I like the word innovation in there too, which we're gonna hear yeah. next. Uh -huh. Neil and Eric? Um, 
in, in one of my other hat roles, I, I sit on a committee that um, assesses this national competition on outcomes and quality improvement initiatives in institutions of higher education as well as programmatic level. And I, because of my role, get most of the programmatic ones. And what I find interesting is that the competencies that are being the center of these evaluations for quality improvement really focus on the ability of the student to do particular competencies related to interventions. So going back to that whole disease management component, it's, you know, they're demonstrating that a graduate program can do this intervention, they can do this procedure, they can do this. What is lacking in those, and this is a national competition of what's the best out there, nobody really takes it to that next final step. And I think it goes back to the conversation we've been having the last day and a half about how we're measuring everything at this proximal end, I think you were using that term, and not at the distal. And, and that's the piece I think we need to get to. And I think, Tricia, that's a little bit of what you were talking about. You know, what's that end product? And I think if we could get to maybe what some of those distal ones are, they apply to everybody in the room. Because we're all part of getting to those distal measures. They don't belong to one of us or the other. They belong to all of us. If we could just work out what they are. I, I just gonna, um, for, for this particular question, uh, again, call out the 2003 IOM report on core competencies for all health professionals. It would not be a bad place to start, and I think they apply, it was designed to apply to all of us. So if we need to think about uh, a touchstone, that might be one. I want to comment on that, and Neil, I mean, you're saying how do we get there? We know some of these, and we all know that, but who's going to take the lead to harness it all together to get there? And I think that's what Eric's saying. That's probably the next topic. Great. Other questions or comments? Uh -huh, Peter? Um, we adopted the IOM core competencies as part of our standards and then took the IPEC and drilled down further when they came out. And that will continue to evolve as more professions get involved and things get um, further uh, advanced. So uh, one of the issues that uh, Susan and I and Patricia uh, are struggling with is where do we go uh, with this rich discussion? Uh, so we've convened the accreditors. We have a lot of accreditors and, uh, from multi-sectors across the room. And it seems to me that the commonalities issue, this issue that we're talking about right now, could be one such direction. Uh, in large part because of the work that's already been done on it, the IOM report that Eric alludes to, the IPEC work that I heard a lot more about in one of the small sessions from Peter and others yesterday and a little bit today, and so on. Uh, but I, I'm concerned about the speed with which we work. Um, um, you know, we don't have time for a lot more discussion. I mean, how much longer can we go on? So I would encourage people to think about focused action around policy derivation. I mean, how do we move this work forward, whatever the particular work is? So we need to focus, and maybe commonalities is a good one to focus on. There may be others. So I would encourage people in the forum to, to get those ideas of focus and relationship to policy issues that we could think of for future topics, discussion papers, uh, which is Patricia's favorite, uh, or, or more focused workshops or consensus studies, whatever. But, but I think we need to, you know, take the foot a little bit and hit a particular part of the anatomy in moving things along, in, 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 in speeding things up. Because, you know, we've, we've gone on. I've gone on for f nearly 50 years now talking about these issues. It's not enough. Uh, we need to move forward. So it's a plea for action. Good points. Other comments? I, you know, if, if I could ask, you know, one thing come out of this conference is we change our mindset about how accreditors are, you know, barriers to innovation, that all we do is ask, add cost and burden, okay? And I think... Um, uh, and I'm tired of being asked the question, how many programs have I closed to demonstrate how good we are, okay? 
that concept has to change and it has to be the the arrow with the circle in there and how do we maximize the opportunity to have the accreditor be part of the advancement of that arrow in the right direction um, and there are programs that we have you know we drag kicking and screaming uh, there are accreditors that probably are on the left side of that curve that need to change but I think that picture uh, for me is is really the story here that we need to keep telling ourselves and we have to get away from Well, those accreditors are just a lot of work and they don't really add value and things like that I, I ask the question every time I go to a site visit You know what you guys learn and how did you do it? Oh, it was great. We talked to each other. We never knew this. We never knew that, you know, and then I say well uh, If we weren't coming would you do that and the answer was no now we're moving from episodic to essentially perpetual uh, about self-evaluation using the standards as a basis. And people are embedding all the standards in their committee work, which is now an annual process, so that instead of like every eight years somebody shows up and you gotta do a year and a half thing to get there, we have that, but we also have a dashboard now that we have that all the schools have to give us the data that basically if there's a red flag showing up, we can then you know go in and take care of business. But I think it has to be part of an ongoing CQI process, and the game should be getting better all the time. Okay, any closing comments? I'm mean, looking at the time, and I'll just summarize in about 30 seconds here. Some of the takeaways and the concepts I heard was about getting stakeholders together, fostering collaboration, using the Department of Labor competencies as a base, top down protecting public health and safety, One Health, social determinants, program quality improvement, holding institutions responsible for faculty, and last, oh, here they're coming, they're coming. But I would like to change that to, you know, maybe, yes, they're finally here. And I gotta profess, I, I do like accreditation. Yeah. We I wanna show it, them our good stuff. No, but I, I think it does rally faculty together. I'll speak from the academic side. And it, you get to know your gaps, and it's just a way to improve programs. So I may be a unique one, but I, I do, do like accreditation and uh, applaud you. So thanks to the panel, and thank you participants for uh, participating. Thank you.